Hello there and welcome back to a probably my favourite video I have filmed this year at least until all the March 1st sets come out because I cannot wait to get my hands on the new Tantiv but today we will be looking at the biggest mock I have ever made I mean the malevolence does come close but this mock is absolutely massive it is 48 by 48 studs you already know what it is by the title of the video and I've probably included a sneak peek in the thumbnail as well as over on Instagram yesterday be sure you are following me on Instagram for a few exclusive posts here and there and sneak peeks for upcoming videos before we get into the mock I'd just like to ask you to subscribe thank you to everyone that has and we are approaching May very quickly two more months to hit 1000 subscribers I know we can do it so make sure you are subscribed for more awesome content such as this and also there is a poll over in my community tab from a few days ago now and it is going to be the decider what fills up this area now for now i think i'll go with a base plate but i'm definitely looking towards that smith's display so make sure you have voted on that and whilst you cannot see the mock i will be putting some awesome visuals such as the one you can see on screen now over the top of me speaking just to give you a better look at the mock than me trying to talk about it record it all in once i feel like that is the best level of quality I can provide for this video and that will do the mock justice so I'll probably cut away from this screen quite a bit and might even just minimize me to a corner or saying while I'm speaking because this mock does look great I do have it out in front of me 48 by 48 studs I mean technically it's 46 by 46 because I decided before I even started building well I built the pod racers already I have a whole video dedicated to them so we won't be going over them too much today but before I built anything else, the first thing I decided to do was to give this mock a black rim because it works well for all the dioramas you can see next to me. Moss Eisley is actually taken from the UCS Moss Eisley set. I've jammed all the figures around the bar, made it a bit more crowded, a bit more like Moss Eisley should be. I'll probably work a few images, but that has its own video. I might revisit it because that was just so long ago and I think it definitely deserves an updated video. So definitely let me know if you want any revisited videos for sets that I perhaps have reviewed way back and it's just a better quality of video now. So I'll be happy to revisit any ones you want. But back to the mock, I started first with the actual design of the base and as you can see the sand is quite flat. It is very flat in the movie, in fact there is not really any sort of shape to it, which you definitely expect it to be arching towards the middle where the pod racers come racing through and to clear the sand. But they've done a good job at keeping it for the start of the race, however around the edge where the crowd meets the sand of the actual racetrack, there are a bunch of different rocks that I've tried to include in a few different gaps and even up the side of the building so I've tried to include as much detail as I can to quite a basic and plain setting for the Star Wars universe it's always usually rocky terrain or at least some sort of rocks laying around but there were very few here and especially doing it in a micro scale that I have where the stud is sort of the size of the minifigure I had to sparingly use the slopes otherwise we've got some massive four meter tall boulders that are chilling around so there are a few of them as well as the creatures i have definitely tried to represent some creatures well of course as far as the actual minifigures are concerned i've just put a bunch of round one by one tiles and the tiles modified with the pin sticking out because i think that best represents a lot of the species i was going to include clips and stuff like i used for the racers but it just didn't come across as well when they don't have the pod race surrounding them so I decided to go with both of these I'll get to why I didn't use studs in a minute because that is a whole nother story that we'll get to when I talk about the crowd but I've also included some one by two round plates with some slopes on top and they are to represent the creatures you can see on screen I didn't want to make them too big as to crowd the pod racers I know Technically they should be a lot taller than some of the pod racers at least because of how flat they are but the pod racers were the or the pods as we discussed in yesterday's video are the main aspect of this diorama this massive 48 by 48 diorama that is more of just a micro scout mock and 
I didn't want it to take away from them. I didn't want to include other things that sort of distracted yours as the viewer's attention when you're looking at this mock. So I shrunk them down a little bit. Perhaps they are some other creatures that I've included on my mock. And whilst we're down here, the actual starting lights was probably... Well, actually, it was quite difficult building a few things here. But one of the most interesting techniques is definitely the starting lights that I've used the free clip elements with the bar sticking out to represent the little blue lights that hang down off of it. And then the green light, which is telling everyone to prepare for takeoff. Now, not everyone is prepared. As I said, when going over the pod races, Anakin isn't in his pod because there is a scene that I really do like when all the other pod racers and all the other drivers are getting ready, just focused and as they normally are when you watch F1 or when you watch all these other different races, the drivers are definitely focused in the zone and Anakin is waving to the crowd and I really wanted to represent that. So I did include a stud. Now the stud has a pin on it. Not to say Anakin has a long neck, but I think the pin better represents Anakin than the actual tile on the bottom of it. So I tried to countersink it. It's currently on a 16 by 16 plate that I've included for that area of sand so there was no chance of getting around that and we'll just have to use our imagination that that pin on top represents Anakin perhaps Qui-Gon's also there to lift him into the car and I didn't want to include too many studs around that because it just cramped up the area so a bit of imagination goes a long way now getting to the rest of the sort of sandy bit we do have a pillar in the middle which as you saw around the starting light earlier there is a nice dome on top which is actually the hats from the Ninjago series. I've taken them off my skeletons from pretty much one of the first waves of Ninjago. Used them here and I think they represent it very well. I am very limited by the parts I had at the minute and would definitely one day in a few years love to come back revisit this and all the parts that Lego have put out since then and using all the different techniques I've learned rebuild this and see how it compares to this model because this is my first big mock and I did only build it in a day it took me a day to build this uh, probably a day and a half if you include the pods and all the studs that I had to put together which really wore down my hands I mean I am battered and bruised I've got a cut on my fingers I've got a few cuts on my fingers and they're just so tired I don't think I'll be building anything on this scale for quite some time but I really enjoyed building it. You can see the tower starts off with four one by one round bricks, then goes to a modified one with the nice stripes up the side, and then goes to about five of the two by two round bricks, then goes to the plates, and then at the top has the different squared off plates to create it coming out because I don't think we have a three by three round anything actually i don't think we have a round plate but i don't think we have a round brick that would have worked in its place or one of the giant three by three cones or domes that is inverted so that it would come out from the bottom so i think the three by three plate is the best i had and didn't want to include too many bricks around it because it just make it a funkier shape than it already is but as i was saying it is the same but the starting line there is another ninjago hat and that is just Situated on a 2x2 two two jumper plate and again underneath the bridge there are two 1x2 two round plates just to create the accents you see in the movie. And I actually used these images which will be cycled through on screen to create this mock and the deleted scene for the full lineup of pod racers which has enabled me to give the most accurate order of pod racers the back two in the corners on the back line haven't been shown they weren't called out in the movie in their order so i actually had to use a earlier clip from that scene when they're all coming out to line up and they're both either side of the track so it only makes sense that they are in their respective corners if that is the other way around then perhaps it's different depending which scene you take it from but now we're getting on to the main bit you've seen the rocks You've seen all the characters, you've seen the pods, you've seen the starting tunnel and I guess we haven't gone over the tower. The tower is quite a neat build because again I don't have some 1x3 round bricks in the nice tan colour. So I've actually used some 1x2s at the bottom to make it seem a lot wider than it is but there's just a bunch of gaps where the slopes cover up. I've got these brown modified pieces that act as doors to the tower so you can 
get in and close the shutters before the pods race off and likewise if we go just to the right of it we've got a few gaps in the bricks which are half a brick wide 0.4 millimeters which i guess technically doesn't fit a stud but that is for the people to go find their seats after settling all the pod racers and there's actually some arches hidden around on the left there's two arches one by three bricks which is very nice to get but we don't have any small enough for the front of the building and back to the tower we've got some slopes just to round off the bottom and make it look like it jumps in and then we've got a one by four round brick with actually two or three one by three regular bricks in the tent color that sit on top that i guess together give the illusion of it being rounded and i've even got some around the fourth side which i've integrated quite well with the crowd we never see this angle so i'm sure this model is just hollow from this side when they were filming it but this is definitely what i think it would look like it's sort of the equivalent of being sat behind one of the stadium banisters when you're at a football game you get this big tube holding up the roof of the stadium or if you're at a concert and very cheap tickets but you still get to see quite a bit from either side so on top of the one by three bricks we then have a three by three wedge angle brick which then rounds off into the four by four round brick and then just a few different studs round plates and slopes to round off the top with of course the dish plate on top which you'll notice there's quite a few different dish pieces if we go over to this nice grey building which I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is. I was going to look at building an interior but besides the pods actually getting ready to be pulled out which is on the opposite side of the mock to this crowd you don't see any of the interior. So I've decided to keep it hollow on the inside and just built up the slopes try to somewhat match it with the crowd. It's not a perfect design but when you shrink down to micro scale you do have to take the liberty of designing certain things yourself and i've definitely done that here and we have the two dishes on top which other than a few studs and a few tails sticking up to get the accents as i said we see in the scene it just rounds off the building quite nicely and definitely fills a gap between the crowds that, as you can see in the scene is definitely needed to be filled but also just enables me to save myself purchasing millions of studs i don't know exactly how many studs there are here but if i had to make a guess there's definitely almost a thousand i mean you can see there are two eight stud wide gaps there are two five stud and one four stud wide so there's definitely a couple hundred if not thousand of these studs here and even then we'll take a look at the crowd now because I didn't have enough studs for this model. I don't think I ever once imagined building a set, building a mock, building anything and complaining that I run out of studs. But they aren't all just regular studs that you see here. In fact, most of them are the two columns on the left and the two columns on the right are. But once we get halfway up, not even halfway up, once we get a third up in the center, all these studs suddenly switch to the modified studs with the pinhole in the middle. They're the studs with the hole, which actually has gone through about half of my collection of them as well. And at one point, I was getting my studs with the bars ready to stand in for them if I needed. But my fiance had an amazing idea where instead of including just pure studs, when you watch the scene, there's actually quite a few empty seats and they look quite sandy. Now, when designing this set, I was definitely going to go with the tan look at the start. But I'm very happy I switched it to grey. There is this tower in the image on screen that looks definitely a lot more grey than tan. And this is what decided for me to go with grey for the actual building. The towers and that definitely blend in well with the sand. So they were going to be built in sand. But I decided to go with light bluish grey and... I'm pretty sure there are some old Lego light grey colours that have snuck their way in as I have managed to pick up a few for my collection. But it's mostly light bluish grey and it just creates a nice blend between that and the tan while staying different to the racetrack and not looking like it's just a slope of sand with a bunch of studs lined there. But I did use tan plates to separate the people because of course where you're sitting it's going to be filled with sand everyone trod in the sand through the steps and 
I'm not saying, but I'm sure they don't really have a cleaner to clean the stands. I'm sure Jubba's bar area is spotless, but for the rest of the sand, it's just going to be a bunch of sand people have trodden in, and also Mos Espa is prone to a bunch of sandstorms, so it makes sense there's going to be some sand sort of clogging the seats between them, and also just filling up the empty spaces where people aren't seen. You're going to be looking straight through to that sandy region, so that has broken it up quite nicely, created some gaps in the stands, and also just makes it look a lot more detailed than a bunch of random studs i originally built one column with just studs and it definitely looked like it was missing something speaking of adding things to the studs on the far left and far right side we'll start off with the left we've got these two by two slopes which are meant to represent the balconies that you see the sort of covers that come out in the stands i suppose they're probably more vip areas for the sands the vip comfortable seating for the moss esper pod race and that is represented with these slopes that i've built into the one by ones and all of this clips on one of the hinge brackets the two piece hinge brackets which are considered just one piece from lego but i'm sure you know what i mean they are the two by two versions and i've just had it so that the 2x2 plate is sticking up out of the hinge and that enables me to clip these to the top. The two middle ones that run up either side of that main crowd in the middle are actually connected to 2x6 plates. I think one's 2x6, one's 2x4 where we've got the slope coming out the corner. But that is because halfway up they sort of stick out and we have this raised crowd that meets the middle which I've just whacked some inverted slopes into get that extra bit of height and I think it's represented it really really well back over to the right the slopes I've used at the top are one by two slopes because we don't have that much room and also they are just that little bit smaller than the areas on the left hand side in fact there is actually a break after this and we go back into another three slopes and it is above them slopes right off the corner of the mark where the commentator actually sits which I did try to include but honestly to fit in another stand would not only cost me a lot in buying all of the studs to fit it but also means I need to extend it out the back and there are so many other builds I'd have to include and shrink down the pods even further which is really not possible for the type of builds that I've gone with but you may notice there are these little cones in tan with the studs on top they act as the smaller towers all over. Now they do have rounded tops. The best way I thought was to use these studs because where you've got the studs sticking out and then the sort of dome shape on the top of the studs, which is the actual stud itself, it does look quite rounded off and looks great on top of the cones because of course the stud then does stick out. I've included four of these around. Three of them are just built in using normal stud connections and I mean, most of the crowd itself is sloped off. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you look over on the left hand side, you will see there is one that's not only built at an angle. This whole banister that runs up the left hand side is included to a plate onto one of them hinge brackets we talked about earlier. And I'll put it on screen for you just so you know what I'm talking about. We've then got some slopes holding up some one by one giant bricks in that light bluish grey which enable me just to fill that side so much quicker than using regular one by one bricks. I think they're one by one by five bricks or one by one by 15 if you're working it out in plate height. And then that has an inverted slope on top. We've then got a cheese slope one by one which is right in front of a snot brick, which has the stud on the side. I've then included a superhero poser, which are these clear elements that came with the Marvel CMF recently. And that is what then sits the one by one round brick, the one by one cone and the stud on top, which gives it the same angle as all of the others and fits it so nicely in. This is my favorite technique of the mock. I know I really liked the starting lights and that is probably a close second looking at it, but this is by far my favourite design. And it's a brand new design, I haven't used it before. I definitely will keep it in my memory to use it again if the opportunity does show up because it is great. And just to finish off this banister, I have used some 1x2x5 bricks on top and a few other bricks just to increase the height. I think I've even included some 1x1, some 1x2 bricks, just 
anything to fill out the gap that I could. You can see there are three of them that run up the middle of the crowd and the two ends and sort of the bottom bits of the crowd are just built with the one by two slopes. Occasionally replacing it with a similar piece where I've run out the top left corner has some of the nice tiled one by two modified slope pieces and there is also at least one or two of the one by one cheese slopes. I mean, even if we go down right to the very front, we've got the modified one by four bricks, which have actually custom stacked a few plates in the middle to keep that going across the 10 studs because we only have the one by fours and four doesn't go into 10. But I've also used some of the cheese slopes, one by ones, one by twos, just down at the start of the fan zones because I didn't feel like recreating that pattern. There definitely is some sort of pattern down there, but as we get the slide sloping up, I thought, what better to use than a slope at the front? It also is more of a protective barrier for the crowd than just a flat side would be, and that was already used for the center. I wanted to mix things up. If we go far left, you can see an even taller wall where the arches were earlier, and we do have that nice one and a half plate sticking out which does represent the line that sticks out which is sort of a different color to the bottom half and the top but i think i've represented that pretty well and now it's time to get into the last few details again the middle of the crowd does lift up which i'll try and show you on camera and you can see there is a podium in the middle and that is just built sort of out of nowhere it just comes up from the bottom it's not attached to any of the other bits and you can see from the back it's not exactly a very nice looking build from the back or from the side i didn't have enough black bricks to have the base going the whole way around so i used white bricks where i could and in fact the whole base that the plates are built up on is separated by some yellow bricks i've just dotted around to hold up all the base i've basically turned it into a similar base to my lego city where i have got a base plate layered some bricks on it just to keep it sturdy and so that the build doesn't bend and break apart like my minifigures display for my star wars minifigures so i have definitely learned a few things from the nearly half a year it's been building that and as I said, it just enables it to keep its integrity a bit better, make it a bit of a stronger build. And back to the platform that is seemingly floating until we put the studs back on top. You can see there are three dark red cheese slopes. These are acting as the little covers that are erected on this platform in the middle of the crowd. Again, probably some VIP seating. I'm not quite sure where it is exactly that Jubba shows up, but... I don't think it would be here surrounded by the crowd. In fact, I think it'd be a bit higher up. So we'll get to that in just a second. You can see just at the back, there are some cheese slopes holding back the crowd and a one by six tan plate separating them from the cheese slopes. And then we've actually got some jumper plates with more cheese slopes acting as the little arches you see. And of course, the middle one's got to be the widest as I feel like that would be the main entrance and exit for this area. A bunch of different arches recreated using these jumper plates. It's actually the same technique I use further down and just hide the jumpers in the sand level, which is very nice because it enables it to be flush with the rest of the build. And going up to probably the last thing to cover for this video, we have this round building at the top, a little one by one sand green cheese slope, which of course is representing the main man, Jubba the Hutt. And it would have been nice to have gotten a few other studs around there. There really just wasn't any sort of space. Jabba's definitely on this sort of pedestal above the crowd. The banner has been recreated using different snot and technic bricks because I've actually used two of the snot bricks either side to get the banner running flush with the wall and two technic bricks in the middle which have enabled me to center the two panels. Now we do have a one by two snot Lego brick which is technic related and would definitely work a bit better with all the other Lego bricks. I'm pretty certain in saying that's the only technic piece or the only two technic pieces in this entire mock but i do not have them in tan only white and white just looked way too weird for this balcony the sandy tan color definitely included it more with the set with the other sandy towers and of course the sand that the pod racers are racing along and then i've just stacked up a bunch of four by four round bricks to get the nice rounded shape and the roof does dip in the middle there is this 
center part which is lower which i've just used different slopes for in fact the gray ones here are from last year's 330 second clone trooper battle pack so they are fairly new pieces they've come in a few other different sets from then i think they were also included in last year's yoda starfighter which was awesome to get a brand new piece in two star wars sets as well as any other that they may have been included on they were even included in this year's 25 years of phantom menace anniversary poly bag which it's just behind me and they were included in the tan color so i did initially give it a go it just didn't look right as the rest of the building was in gray and of course we've got another blue banner above jabba and the brown markings by the roof of that building so i'm pretty sure that is everything there are a few other details like on that building i've got two ingot tiles which just adds a bit of dimension to the building but Besides that, I think I've pretty much covered it all. Now, this is going to remain built for hopefully a few months, I think. I definitely want to do something for May, so I'll have to take this apart for May or perhaps condense it into a smaller diorama such as the Dark Trooper and Moss Eisley next to me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, I hope all the clips are amazing of this just to show off how good it really looks. This will be behind me in all of my videos to come. Again, as I said, for the next few months so it does fill up that space very very nicely in fact i could put it there right now and as you can see you might not be able to see all of the detail but it definitely does fill that slot very very nicely and when i'm showing off the city i'll definitely be sure to flash a bit of the giant diorama in the future because it does look very nice next to all my minifigures and i can't wait for the next one i think Next time, I'm definitely going to go with a minifigure scale build in that area because I've done the micro build now. This is sort of related to the diorama we're meant to be getting for Phantom Menace. So if I can keep this build in a smaller size, I'm definitely going to transfer some, if not most, of the pod racers across. And I'll probably end up recreating another scene. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you are subscribed. And before we end this video, I'd just like to include one last shot of it in its place. And just give one last look at my first giant Lego Star Wars mock. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, may the bricks be with you.